In this presentation, we are going to look at the negative binomial distribution. Now, in particular, we are going to look at the method of moments, and it's specifically the method of moments for the negative binomial distribution. We're not really going to get it into things like the Poisson gamma mixtures here. So, suppose that a random variable x follows a negative binomial distribution with mean equals 0 0.36 and a variance of 1.44. The question we're asked is, calculate the probability of x equal to 3. Okay, so this is the method of moments. We are given the mean and the variance. The mean is also the expected value of x. So what we do is just square that in this particular case and divide that by the variance of x minus the expected value of x. Okay, so straightforward enough calculation there. To calculate, that will give us r, which is one of the two parameters for the negative binomial distribution distribution we are also looking for p the second parameter which is the probability and that is can be evaluated using this expression here one minus the expected value of x divided by the variance of x okay so straightforward enough uh, i made a mistake here so i just corrected it here in the first case what we're going to do is calculate r that's the expected value of x squared divided by the variance of x minus the expected value of x so that is 0 0.36 squared divided by 1.44 minus 0 0.36. So 0 0.36 squared, okay, uh, 1.44 minus 0 0.36, that is 1.08. Do a little bit of calculator work and we should get an answer of R is equal to 0 0.12, okay? Now, we get the variance of X, sorry, the probability of p using the variance of x, the expected value of x, and the variance of x. 1 minus the expected value of x divided by the variance of x, that is 1 minus 0 0.36 divided by 1.44, 1 minus 0 0.25, that gives us a probability of 0 0.75. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is, just as a quick remark actually, uh, I'm using this particular version of the probability mass function, okay, and that uh, corresponds to the method of moments I've used be up above. So just watch out for that. There are multiple versions or multiple formulations of the probability mass function and that has consequences, knock-on consequences. So this one, this particular formulation I have here, that is has a direct correspondence to the particular method of moments. If I'm used, the, the approach I've used, if I'm using a different formulation of the negative binomial, there is a slightly different version of the method of moments. So just watch out for that. In this particular case, just for the sake of extra clarity, I just used the most straightforward version of the method of moments and picked the probability mass function that corresponded to that. Corresponded to that. But there are other versions of the probability mass function where uh, we have 1 minus p to the power of k times p to the power of r, so on and so forth. So there would be a slightly different version of the probability mass function there. So just watch out for that, okay? There are multiple versions of the PMF, and that means there are multiple versions of the method of moments. So I think I've made that statement loud and clear. Okay, so what we have here is a binomial coefficient of k plus r minus 1 and k so from k plus r minus 1 choose k uh, 1 minus p to the power of r and times p to the power of k okay now so that part here 1 minus p to the power of r that is 1 minus 0 0.75 to the power of 0 0.12 straightforward enough because we are asked to find the probability of x equal 3 here that it that means that this is 0 0.75 cubed 0 0.75 cubed straightforward enough uh looking at the the prob uh, the binomial coefficient what we have there is k equal 3 r is equal 0 0.12 minus 1 is minus 1 and from that choose 3 so this is what we have here a binomial coefficient of 2.12 and 3 uh that's a bit of calculator work that should resolve out very quickly and but what we have to do here is show this probability mass function so just actually the binomial coefficient should evaluate as 0 0.047488 and 
the rest is a little bit of calculator work. Overall, the answer should work out to be 0 0.01696. Okay, and that's the, that's the answer we're looking for. Now, just as a quick remark, how to do the binomial coefficient when the top number is a real number like that, and it's also less than the bottom number. You just keep doing it as much as you need to do, okay? So we do this the usual way we'd sort of start out. We look at the bottom number first and count down till we get to one. Three times two times one, okay? And what we do above is we start at the first number there, 2.12, multiply it by that number minus one, 1 1.12, and then multiply it by that number minus one again, 0 0.12. And there should be an equal uh, number uh, of numbers, coefficients, above and below the line. It's just a sort of way of remembering how to do it. It's not actually how it's defined. It just helps you, uh, you know, work through it on, at a practical basis. Okay. And so if that's just a little bit of a structure, uh, uh, explain the structure about how I got that binomial coefficient. Okay. So if you're not familiar with that, if this is not straightforward, I suggest you look at binomial coefficients and study them before you continue on with this stuff. Okay, we'll leave it there.